Before I share my own reflections, I would like to introduce a special speaker. Professor Sarah Hebert Birch was selected to give the baccalaureate address, which is typically given the day before commencement. Today, she will deliver a briefer version of those remarks, sharing with today's graduates the wisdom of an incredible career focused on field biology. Sarah Hebert Birch is the Edward Hicks McGill Professor Emerita of Mathematics and Natural Sciences. Her colleagues have described her as a hummingbird whisperer. Her research has focused on hypometabolic states, including hibernation and its short-term counterpart, daily torpor. Sound familiar? In small birds and mammals. Professor Hebert Birch has taught courses on animal physiology and behavioral endocrinology at Swarthmore for 26 years. I hope you'll join me in congratulating her on her retirement. We will miss Professor Hebert Birch's well-balanced perspective, her calm demeanor, and her commitment to her students. Professor Hebert Birch will now offer her remarks from San Juan Island, Washington, where she has been sheltering in place. Seniors, family, and friends, I am so glad to be able to be with you today as we celebrate and recognize the many profound accomplishments of our graduating seniors. In a sense, I am also graduating from Swarthmore on this day, and I just want to say that it is a huge honor to be a part of this graduating class. So students often say that they feel tr truly initiated into the Swarthmore community at first collection. That takes place in our beautiful outdoor amphitheater, and then four years later, they come back to that same amphitheater. They walk across that grassy stage to receive their uh, hard-earned diploma. In normal times, we would all be wearing our academic gowns. Students would be struggling with what I consider to be the most diabolical piece of academic regalia, the mortarboard, trying to keep it from slipping just long enough to get a decent photo, because you know that photo is going to be on display. Now May has come, but the amphitheater is virtually empty of people. My gown is hanging on the back of my office door, 3,000 miles away from here, but at least I wanted to be able to speak to you from a place with trees. You've known all along that this day was going to mark the day that you stepped out into the world from this community. Some of you dreaded it. Some of you could not wait. Some of you are wistful, but ready. None of you could have imagined that this day would be taking place during a pandemic. So when you responded to your acceptance letter from Swarthmore College, you were expecting to be challenged. You were expecting to be surrounded by other students who were as eager to learn as you, and you were expected to be supported by faculty as you learned how to solve that kind of problem, how to light, write that lab report, how to wrestle the information that you needed from that database, how to weave emotion into that painting, how to breathe wind and magic into Shakespeare's The Tempest. And then, with very little warning, that world, at least the way you had experienced it, evaporated, and it has not been easy in so many ways. It was hard to find a quiet place to work, to study, to write without interruption. It was hard to feel motivated. How important is my thesis right now when my city is being ravaged by a pandemic? It was hard not to feel anxious. What will my professor think of me if I can't do my best work right now? It was hard to feel connected. Some of you were sheltering not too far from campus. 
And yet it might as well have been a thousand miles away because you couldn't leave your house or your apartment. Others of you are half a world away, trying to feel connected to the community that you left behind. It was hard to work. Some of you were caring for family members who had fallen ill with COVID-19. Some of you fell ill yourselves. Some of you were doing both of those things at the same time that you were trying to complete your class assignments. And some of you lost loved ones and didn't realize that you would not have the chance to say goodbye. So many of the things that take place during spring semester didn't happen. The dance concerts, the awards banquets, the poster sessions, the senior recitals, shows at the List Gallery and the Katow Art Gallery, research talks, the Strawberry Festival, Artini. But perhaps the hardest thing of all was not having had the chance to say goodbye to all the people at Swarthmore who made your life so rich. And there are so many people on this campus who also wanted to wish you well in person before you graduated. Not just your teachers, your professors, your lab and language instructors, your athletic drama and music coaches, but also the people in your department office, the people who made your meals and served them to you at Sharples, the ITS people, the only people who can figure out how to get your device to log into EduRoom, the deans, religious advisors, there are so many I could not name them all. In the midst of all this, many of you have wondered, how could I have been so unlucky to have had a pandemic interrupt my plans to celebrate this milestone? For some perspective on that, I'd like to read you some words spoken by C.S. Lewis to Oxford students in 1939 when Europe was on the brink of World War II. I'm going to substitute the word pandemic for war. The pandemic creates no absolutely new situation. It simply aggravates the permanent human situation so that we can no longer ignore it. Human life has always been lived on the edge of a precipice. We are mistaken when we compare pandemic with normal life. Life has never been normal. Even those periods which we think most tranquil turn out on closer inspection to be full of cries, alarms, difficulties, emergencies. So in these uncertain times, a phrase that you have heard more times than you care to count in the last few months, what is it that you can be sure of? The thing that you can be sure of is the next good thing that you will do. And by doing that thing, you will create the future. We can't be certain about the outcome of the current crisis, but we can be certain of the joy the love, the kindness, the generosity that we bring to it. So what is this next good thing that you can do? The next good thing that you can do is to give yourself over completely to celebrating this day and all that it stands for in every way that you can. Allow your family and your friends to shower you with their joy, and their admiration for all that you have accomplished. You have earned this celebration. And going forward, remember that you are the ones who will build the future after this crisis. And that is what fills me, fills us, with tremendous hope. We cannot wait to discover all of the ways that you will find to build that future. And so I leave you with our deepest congratulations on this special and very important day.